Good evening, brothers and sisters. I hope this video finds you doing well. This is another day that God has blessed us, and we just thank God for it. We will rejoice in this beautifully, divinely created day that he's given to us. We hope that you have had a good day. If you are working, we hope that your day went smoothly. If you are retired or uh, you, you don't work, we hope still that God has really blessed you and your day has been filled with his grace and his mercy. Amen. We thank God for all that he continues to do in our lives and just thank God for being God all by himself. Hey, amen. We do solicit your prayers for um, our sick and our shutting in. Amen. Those in the hospital, those who may be at home and still experiencing sickness or whatever, we we just we just continue to pray for them. Also, those in bereavement, we pray for them as well. We're so thankful and looking forward to Sunday morning. We will have um, baptism. We are baptizing two more who've given their life to Christ. We just thank God for what He's doing um, in the lives of especially our young people. We just thank God for that. Amen. There is a word. There is a word from the Lord um, this evening. And before we get into our word, we uh, I'd like for you to join me in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus, thanking you for being so good to us. Thanking you for your grace, your mercy. Thanking you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our need. Father, we, we love you today. and We know that you love us. Father, I ask that you bless the word that's about to come forward. Touch the ears and the hearts and the minds of your people that they will be receptive of this word. We pray that you continue to bless this ministry that we go forth and, 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 and preach and teach and fulfill the mission that you have, you have called us to. Father, I pray that you um, allow your spirit to speak through me and that someone will be enlightened and instructed, Father. These are the blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our word for today is found in the New Testament. It comes from 1 Peter. It comes from 1 Peter, the um, 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, the 10th verse. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, the 10th verse. What I want to do, I want to read two, um, two passages of Scripture. What I, what I, I want to read the translation, two translations. That's what I want to do. Um, the first one will be in the New King James Version. The second one will be the New Living Translation. It gives, a, 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 it gives clarity to the King James Version. First of all, let's read the King James Version, 1 Peter 4, chapter, the 10th verse. And it reads, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Amen. And then the New Living Translation reads it this way. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Amen. And we'd like to speak to you from a thought today, you know, this evening, using the gifts of God. Using the gifts of God. God has poured out his Holy Spirit from heaven on those who have received his son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. It occurred on the day of Pentecost, just as the prophet Joel had prophesied in Joel 2 and 28, when he said in that day, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And he went ahead and explained what the spirit would do. Now, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit resulted in, in we gaining or obtaining or were given supernatural spiritual gifts, such as of help, strength, guidance, and much more working within us. For, for example, for help, Jesus says in John 14 and 16, he said, and I will pray to Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. An example of how the Holy Spirit gives us a gift of strength, Paul says in Ephesians 3 and 16, he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit 
in the inner man. That's strength, where the Holy Ghost gives us the gift of strength. And then when it talks about the Holy Ghost guides us, Paul says in Romans 8 and 14, for as many as are led, for, many, uh, for as many as are guided, amen, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And there are many other gifts that the Holy Ghost gives us, and, and a lot of them are listed in Romans 12, verses 6 through 8, and also 1 Corinthians 12, verses 8 through 10. And we have to understand that the Holy Ghost works with, with whatever natural abilities that we may have inside of us. And he takes our natural abilities to a whole new level of effectiveness for the kingdom of God. Are y'all following me for, so far? Amen. Sometimes, sometimes the Holy Spirit imparts a truly special and extraordinary gift or gifts to a person. Sometimes it's not just using our natural abilities, but sometimes God gives us a special unction, a special anointing. Amen. And these special or extraordinary gifts are given by the Holy Spirit only as he chooses to give them. We can't choose what God gives us, what the Holy Spirit gives us. He chooses what to give us. The Holy Spirit is very intelligent. He chooses what gifts we are to have. See, that's why it bothers me when I hear certain folks um, tell someone that they can pass their anointing to someone else. I can lay hands on them and I will transfer my anointing to, to them that they can do what I do. But if, if it's meant for someone to have a certain gift or anointing, only God through the Holy Spirit can give it to them. Don't ever, when you, whenever you get around somebody and they say, well, I want to pass my anointing on to somebody else, my son in the ministry or something like that, get away from that person because that anointing, what he has, he can buy it from Walmart because what God gives you is for you and not for anybody else. Amen. We're still talking about using the gifts that God gives. Amen. Amen. If, if it's meant for them to have that anointing, only God can give it to them through the Holy Ghost. No human can pray a gift into someone, nor can any human assign a gift to someone. I think that I'll make you this. I'll make you a prophet. I'll make you an apostle. I'll make no human can assign a gift that is a God gift, a spiritual gift to anyone. Amen. A piece of paper don't make you an apostle. A amen. A piece of paper don't make you a prophet or a prophetess. A piece of paper don't make you a preacher or a minister. These are gifts given only by God's calling. Amen. Ephesians 4 say that Jesus ascended so that the gifts would descend and, and to, to edify the church. Amen. Only God can give those gifts. And also how much of that gift or anointing that will be given to an individual is determined only by the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't pray anybody's strength and you can't do that. God gives them the amount of Holy Ghost, I mean, the amount of the anointing through the Holy Ghost as he desires. Amen. Now, the wisdom that we obtain from this verse today, it applies to every gift. Every gift that the Holy Spirit gives, but it seems to have these special gifts in mind primarily. It could be anything, any gift that God gives. It could be a special gift of, um, as listed in, in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, administration. It could be the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of wisdom and knowledge, the gift of giving. Amen. Because, yes, giving is a gift as well that God gives through the Holy Spirit. The gift of tongues and the gift of, the inter of the interpretation of tongues. All of these are gifts that God gives through the Holy Ghost. And although the Bible, the Bible gives us lists of such um, uh, gifts in certain places in the Bible, there is no reason to think that that all the gifts are listed in these places. They're gifts that God have not have not listed or had listed in the Bible. God gives many gifts. Through the Holy Ghost. And but these are gifts, these are um, listed 
to be examples of what the Holy Spirit imparts into us to perform whatever purpose God has anointed us to serve. Are y'all with me? It gives us hints and clues of what we are to use or what God gives us to use for the edification and the growing and growth of his kingdom. Amen. Now, the gifts that we receive from the Holy Ghost, I want now we're getting into we're getting into um, using God's gifts. The gifts that we receive from the Holy Ghost or through the Holy Ghost, whether they are ordinary or whether they are extraordinary. They are meant for ministry. I need to say that again. The gifts that we receive through the Holy Ghost or from the Holy Spirit, whether they're ordinary or whether they are extraordinary, they are meant for ministry only. They're meant for ministry. Ministry is not talking about just preaching and just teaching. Ministry means to serve others for God's will or for God's glory. That's what ministry is. The gifts that God gives are not given to make you to, to become popular. Amen. God doesn't give you a gift so that you'll think that you're more spiritual than others. God does not give you a gift so that so that you can make you rich. Because some people feel that, oh, yes, I, I, I'm gifted. That's why I have what I have. No, God didn't give you gifts for any purpose to serve you. He didn't do that. These gifts are meant to be used to minister to the needs of the other members of the body of Christ and to people in general, which means not just church folks, but they are to be used where they are needed or where there is a need. God gifts us or, or he gives us giftings so that we can use use them where we are, where they are needed. A Amen. Amen. When the Bible says in, in Proverbs 18 and 16, and a lot of folks take this out of context. A man's gifts make room for him and bring it him before great men. It is not referring to getting popular. It's not referring to being honored by, by other folks. It's not referring to getting rich and prospering. It's not referring to that, but it means that the gifts that God give us is to be, are, are to be used in his service, and they will provide or present the opportunities for you to use them. That's what it means. A man's gifts will make room for him. Uh, whatever God gives him to use for his purpose, they will also there will also be opportunities provided for him to use those gifts. Amen. Not for you, but in the service of the Lord. And we must put our gifts into practice. Whatever God gives us, we got to put them into practice. We have been given the gifts. But it's up to us to make use of them. Amen. Everybody don't have the same gift, but whatever God gives us, we got to make use of it. See, and that's why Paul told Timothy in first Timothy four and 14. He said, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Amen. Whatever God gives you to do, don't just sit on your gift. Because some folk like to be, they like to be uh, um, um, begged, please do this, do that. And all, you know, they, they get gifts and talents mixed up. But whatever God has given them, they have to beg you to use God's gift as though you're some great wonder. If God has gifted you, you will humble yourself and use your gift when the spirit moves on you to use it. A Amen. See, we, we, we should we should be we should be good, good stewards of the gift. This is what our verse is saying. We should be good stewards of the gift that God has given us in the context or in the words of of the scripture we use for today. A steward is someone who manages the grace of God as an agent of God himself. See, this means that we should use the gifts that God has given us on God's behalf. And for his plans and for his purposes, not to serve ourselves. Don't walk around thinking that they're going to look up to me because I, I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm an apostle. I'm, I'm a preacher. They got to look up to me. No, that was given to you to serve God as he leads us. 
Amen. It has nothing to do with your status. It has to do with God's. Amen. See, this is how Paul viewed his own gift when he said in 1 Corinthians 4 and 12, 4 verses 1 and 2, Paul says, let a man consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. What does Paul mean? Paul says we need to understand that we have a responsibility to use our gifts for God's glory and for God's glory only. A Amen. We will have to give an account of everything that we have done one day. Romans 14 and 12 said that so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. How we use the gifts that God give us, we're going to have to give an account. The Bible tells us that we're going to stand before the Lord one day, the judge one day, and the books will be open. And Lord knows we better pray that our names are found in the book. Every deed that's done in the body, we're going to have to give an account for that. And God gives us these gifts to serve him. No one should ever envy or or be jealous of another man's gifts. See, God has chosen to give you what he sees fit for you to use for his glory and and what he knows that you can handle. And sometimes, sometimes your purpose is not your preference. See, and this is why Paul tells us to avail ourselves to be used by God according to his purpose. Amen. He said in Romans 12 and, and 1, I beseech ye, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. This is what he said. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. A living sacrifice sacrifice. A living sacrifice means that you're telling the Lord that whatever purpose you have for me, whatever purpose you have chosen for me to serve, you will that, that I'm going to work it to the best of my ability for your kingdom. That is what presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice means. Brothers and sisters, don't ever underestimate your special gifts. Don't ever neglect to put them into practice. Make them work. Amen. Never think that what God has given you to use cannot make a difference in his kingdom. People need your gifts. That's why God give them to you. And you are the one God has assigned to bless them. They need the grace of God. They need that grace that God has given you and only you can manage it. Amen. Using the gifts of God are for God's glory and not your glory. A amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for, for the word on the day and we thank the Lord for what he has given us to share with you. A amen. God has been good to us. God is good to us. And we just thank God for all the support that you have given um, over these past few years. And we praise him for that. And we ask that you just share this word with somebody, share this word with somebody. Amen. And hope that there will be a help because a lot of people are asking, I don't know what God wants me to do. But right now, right now, you just pray God and you just pray and serve him as he leads you. Serve him in love and your gift will be it will present the opportunity for you. Sometimes a gift is just to encourage somebody, smile at somebody, you, to be a giver and bless somebody. You have several gifts that, that the Holy Spirit gives. So don't think that you got to be in the forefront and everybody see you. Amen. Your gift might, might have you behind the scenes and blessing folk. And nobody can do what you can do like you can do. Amen. Amen. So thank you. Thank you so much for all that you do. And if you um, are ever in the Blarney community, come on out. Come on out to Mizpah um, every Sunday morning. We meet every Sunday morning. Sunday school starts at 10 o'clock and morning worship starts at about 1115. So come on out and share with share with us. We would love to have you. Amen. And if you want to become a covenant partner with us and you want to sow a seed um, in this ministry, 
If this word is blessing you, you know, you are more than welcome to do so with a personal check, cashier's check, money order, however you want to do this, and send it to the address at the bottom of the screen. That's Mispa Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. Amen. Amen. Remember to keep all of our sick and shut in in prayer. Um, um, you might not be sick today, but you can be sick tomorrow. So pray for those who are sick as we pray for you. If you are sick or if you get sick, we're praying God's blessing upon you, the blessing of healing and deliverance. Amen. Pray for those who are in bereavement because people are losing folks right and left. So pray for those who are going through that the Lord continue to comfort them. Also, give them a phone call, reach out to them, comfort them as well. Amen. Be safe when you're going out there. It is cold and flu season. We can add COVID to the list because COVID is there also. So make sure we are doing what we need to do. Amen. To protect ourselves and to stay as well as we can. All right. I got to get out of here. I love you. Um, a reminder again, we're having baptism on Sunday. We have two that we, we that came and gave their lives to Christ. So we're having baptism on Sunday morning at nine o'clock. So if you want to join us, you are more than welcome to do so in the pool house in the back. So come on out and join us during that time. Um, I'm getting out of here now. So um, hopefully we'll see you on Sunday morning. Looking forward to it and to see what the Lord is ha will have for us on Sunday morning. So until then, take care. I love you and we'll talk later.